Um, the important stuff, though, is of course is on the uh, the video the video tab, because um, what we have is we actually have new new movies. Uh, now, see, this is kind of interesting because this is a, a, a trailer here for Avatar, and so you can actually browse trailers um, even though the movie isn't actually out yet. So that's that's actually pretty cool. I, I like that that you can browse uh, trailers. Um, here is the movie Ghost. Uh, I guess which is appropriate since Patrick Swayze just passed away recently. So um, there's a couple, a couple different choices here. So you can see uh, that you can play the trailer, and this will show you like a full screen trailer. And then there's also an option to um, rent uh, the video. So if I click on rent, I'm not sure what's going to happen here because you you noticed um, I think that uh, there was no um, points value. So there's no there's no cost here. Uh, so that's really weird because if, if, if there's no cost, you know, how do you know how much it costs? So I'm going to click on rent and you have a couple different choices here. Watch on a PC or watch on the Zoom. So I'm going to click on Zoom and then, okay, so after, so after you click on rent and then after you click on your device, uh, to say what what type it is, it'll actually tell you how much it costs you. So 360 points, uh, for the, uh, HD, um, content and then uh, 240 points for the SD content. Now I'm just I'm just kind of curious here if I click on rent again but I click on PC okay 360 and 240 so I thought I thought maybe the price would be different so I don't really understand how that part works but let's uh, let's zoom out here for a second and let's see if we can find something that we can actually uh, buy okay so Fast and the Furious is rent uh, Mutant Chronicles. Okay, so here we go. So here's a new movie. I can click on buy and um, When I look here at the buy um, Options I can buy the uh, HD content for 1600 uh, points or I can buy the SD content for 1200 points now depending on what part of the world you're in of course It's going to completely change what the cost is when I'm editing the video I'll put in the you know uh, the actual costs. I really truly wish that this was just in dollars and cents these Microsoft points I initially was kind of like well, yeah, it's okay to use points But when you start buying content and you're looking at something and you don't actually know how much it really truly is it's it, frankly, it's pretty irritating. So I really wish Microsoft would get away from these uh, idiotic uh, points things. Um, and then, of course, there's um, you know TV series. So you can go ahead and look at a uh, look at a TV series here. So this is Robin Hood, and it looks like I can click on buy all, and it will give me, I assume, uh, the option to purchase the. TV series. Now you notice that there, was, that there was no rental option. Yeah, so basically I can buy them in, in HD or SD. Now the weird thing is is that there's no way to rent it. So it looks like it's it's going to be a mixture of rental and purchase and you're not going to be able to rent everything you can purchase and uh, vice versa. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully that stuff will sort of smooth out um, moving forward. Uh, in the, the podcast section, it looks it looks pretty much the same, you know. Although, of course, now if you have uh, HD uh, podcasts, that makes it a little bit uh, easier to play back directly on your device because you're not going to need to uh, convert it. And I should point out, speaking of converting, um, ever since I loaded up uh, the Zune software. I've noticed that it is uh, working really, really hard. So it's actually running. Um, it's using up like a ton, a ton of my CPU usage. Uh, now, right now, it says Zune EXE, but previously I saw that it was actually the uh, transcoding engine software uh, that was using up a lot of um, CPU usage. So obviously, it's doing something in the background. My hunch is that it's trying to transcode some of my uh, my TV or you know movie content that I have. But it's a little bit weird because, of course, I didn't actually ask it to do that, and I don't know why it's going ahead and doing it on its own. So that's a mystery I will have to um, investigate. And then um, here we have uh, some picks. And so this is the automated uh, the Zoom software. You know, it tries to figure out um, you know what uh, what kind of stuff that you would like based on the content that you have played. I'm going to switch back here to collection and uh, music and I'm going to show you a couple of other new features in the Zoom software. Now when you hover over um, an icon, like a, an album rather, you get a couple choices. You can play the smart DJ mix, you can uh, play the um, 
album, or you can go directly into mix view. Now, since I don't want to run afoul of any uh, copyright laws here, I just muted my sound on the computer. So I'm going to click on play smart uh, DJ. And uh, basically I say, uh, so to enable Smart DJ, go to the metadata area in the software settings and check the box to automatically update album art metadata. Okay, that's weird. I don't, I don't know why it needs to be able to update my metadata. Um, I'm a little bit scared, frankly, of it um, screwing with my, um, screwing with my content because I don't really want to uh, let it do that, but I'm going to change it to only add missing information. So we'll click on that and then we'll try that. Okay, so this is the Smart DJ um, mix. So what this is, is this is um, it's essentially the software uh, is looking at the Marie Digby album and it's essentially saying, okay, you know, who else is similar uh, to this? in um, your your music collection. And so you click on it, you hit play, and then you can actually get a bunch of related artists and related uh, themes. And so as you can see that it's actually, uh, it's actually playing the music right now. But now let's, let, frankly, let, let's just see if this is smart. Okay, so that was Marie Digby. Uh, now if I go down to uh, Red, um, we'll, see if, uh, we'll see if Red, uh, you know, brings up anything sort of uh, similar, because Red is, you know, a bit, hard rock uh, and so now I'm looking over at uh, the content here and it's got a bunch of stuff in here that frankly uh, I mean it, well some of it is in my collection it's a little bit hard to tell if all of it's in my collection I think it is actually because I don't actually have a zoom pass so yeah this has to be everything that's in my collection so there's that option and then there's another icon that pops up and this is of course the mix view so when you click on mix view this gives you um, essentially the way of, it gives you a way to explore your your favorite artist so it gives you uh, related content and a bunch of other stuff now this is of course completely dependent on the zoom.net servers coming back and showing you this content and as you can see we're still staring unfortunately at a um, a loading screen and this is a kind of a sad reality of the way zoom.net works is that a lot of the times it just seems like it's really slow uh, it's, I don't know if Microsoft doesn't have enough servers or what but there we go looks like it's finally maybe hopefully loading no it's not loading okay so forget about that all right, so that is it for my look at the software. Um, actually, no, I take it back. I, I'm, I'm going to do a, a couple of other things. Uh, I'm going to show you the mini player mode. So this is the mini player mode. It's it's this icon here. Uh, when you're in the desktop mode, you just click on this icon here that is over to the uh, the left, and then this gives you the uh, mini player mode. Now the cool thing is, is in the mini player mode, you actually you know you can browse, you can switch to different to different tracks. And you can you can even like go back and forth, uh, so it's 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 pretty cool. And then the other thing that the Zoom guys did is they created um, a mini player that. Uh, oh, sorry, I take it back. If you're running Windows 7, you will see a slightly different uh, mini. You will actually see a little little uh, controls pop up here, and you can actually control the playback. So that's actually something that is pretty cool. All right, so this has been Jason Dunn from Zune Thoughts. This has been an epic series of videos uh, looking at the Zune 4.0 software. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the Zune next and some DVD playback and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.